Good morning, and thank you for joining our webinar. Today we're uh, our webinar series, AP Automation in Five Easy Steps. And today we're talking about step four, which is the remit process. I have uh, Christina Robbins, who will be spending a little bit of time today talking to you about the, the business reasons for automating uh, your AP department, as well as Paul Owens, who will be taking you through the workflow component and dealing with the exception invoices. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Christina. Great. Thank you, Sean. So we have boiled the AP process down to just five simple steps. And as Sean mentioned, in today's session, we're going to talk about just the fourth step. As part of my presentation, I'll share an example of a real customer who is using ECM technology to support AP automation. And then you'll also hear from Paul, who is our senior sales engineer. And he's going to give you a brief demo of the software so that you can see how it works and so that you'll know what to look for as you consider various options. So we've covered the first few steps, scanning, indexing, and reconciliation previously. And if you missed those live webinars, you can access recordings of the sessions at our website at www.digitechsystems.com. And then over the next few weeks, we'll have an additional webinar to cover the final AP automation step, which is retain. So you want to keep your eyes open for that email invitation. And before we jump into remittance, let's quickly cover the first few steps of that AP automation journey. Step one in moving from paper-based invoicing to automated AP is to convert those invoices you're still receiving on paper into digital files that are more secure and easier to work with. And you'll do so by scanning the paper documents into digital files. Once digital, they then benefit from the same automatic security, retention, and routing as their electronic counterparts. Now that you've gotten rid of your paper invoices, you've got a bunch of digital invoice files. So what do you do with them? Well, step two is to index the new digital invoices so you can find them again using keyword search. Eliminating manual effort here is key. So you know to look for software options that include the ability to automatically identify and classify invoices by type, and that will electronically extract the critical information off the invoices so you don't have to hand key anything. Step three in our AP process is to reconcile invoices against supporting documentation. Digital invoices simplify this step by allowing you to view invoices, purchase orders, and delivery information side by side from a single search. Look for systems that will integrate easily with your line of business applications, such as accounting or inventory management. And now we arrive at step four, which is the primary topic of our discussion today, and that is remittance. Invoices that are received must get paid. And often, suppliers have negotiated discount terms that offer companies incentives if they pay invoices early. Streamlining invoice processing times by routing invoices through approval processes electronically dramatically reduces the time spent processing each invoice, which enables the company to take advantage of more early payments. The Institute for Finance and Management explains that a 2% early payment discount is the equivalent of a 36% reduction in annual interest rate. That's a huge savings for the average business. Electronic routing is accomplished with applications known as workflow or business process management, BPM. And they dramatically speed and simplify your entire AP process. You will set up rules that designate which approval process each invoice flows into. These can be based on virtually any criteria, including the dollar amount, vendor, or even type of purchase. As invoices travel through the workflow, each step notifies a user that an invoice in the system needs their attention. They can quickly view not only the invoice, but also any supporting documentation. So they're able to authorize the payment and move the invoice into remittance much more quickly. Even more important, automated processes can help to ensure internal controls are followed with every invoice, from the moment it is received to the moment the payment is sent ensuring compliance with regulations, and minimizing any opportunity for fraud. So what goes on your workflow shopping list? We'll start with automatic routing of documents and the ability to search for all related documents from one screen. It's also nice to have the ability to apply electronic signatures to documents as required. Terrace Real Estate Group offers a nice example of what happens when invoices get routed electronically through AP processes. Founded in 2000, Terrace offers strategic real estate planning and real estate brokerage to commercial construction and property management companies. The firm manages about 1,300 leases and accompanying documentation, 
and receives around 20,000 invoices annually. Prior to the implementation of AP Automation, all of these invoices were processed by hand. Employees had to enter information twice, once into the accounting program and again into the document management system. Paper documents were passed by hand for review and approval, and managers spent up to five minutes verifying and approving each invoice. Occasionally, invoices were simply lost during the process, and staff members would spend hours tracking information down when vendors called. Multiple copies of leases and lease revisions were kept in on-site filing cabinets and off-site storage, and were often impossible to keep up to date. In 2006, Terrace began searching for an AP automation system that would allow them to route invoices through standard processes, expedite approvals, and that would integrate with their accounting software. As they learned more about available products, it also became important to them that their document management software offer a fully integrated workflow function, which would allow them to define custom process steps for different types of documents and would then automatically route electronic files through those processes. Finally, Terrace determined that they wanted a cloud-based document management service so that they could avoid the hassle and expense of implementing software on their corporate network. Terrace worked with ImageTech, a local scanning bureau, to scan and index 21,000 pages of lease documentation from their existing files, and then they began actively scanning their own incoming paper files in December 2006. The scanned documents are automatically uploaded to their document management system, which kicks off the workflow engine to identify document types and send them through the appropriate approval processes. Invoices and accounting records are also managed electronically, and the workflow system automatically initiates approval processes and reports on progress. Invoices are never lost, and managers can leave electronic comments on invoice files using annotations or textual notes that might explain any reason for delay in approval. This process improvement has saved management 1,150 hours annually and has resulted in a 30% productivity improvement for their staff. So I'm going to turn things over to Paul so that he can go ahead and show you how this works. Thank you very much. I'll show my screen when it comes up. We'll go from here. <clears throat> uh, I I'm going to go through this. I know that last time we talked about reconciliation, where we're matching to a PO. And a lot of companies, when that matches to that PO, uh, it's good to pay, unless maybe it passes a threshold. But what about all the documents that come in, invoices, so forth, that are not PO-based, or they may have an end uh, uh, problem on it? So what we're going to do is look at how we process the rest of those to get them to the point where you can actually write the check. Now then, I can log on any number of ways to the system. Here I've logged on as an administrator. You can see I have 92 projects, including my AP invoices, uh, and I have my administrator console, which is where I would go in and build the workflow process. Uh, it's all graphical. Uh, it's GUI driven. It's very easy to do. In fact, it takes longer to whiteboard it than it does to set it up on the keyboard. We're not going to go there today. I'm sure you're glad. We're going to look at today is what the AP clerk would see. So if I log on as an AP clerk, and this particular AP clerk processes invoices A through L, you can see over here I have work steps waiting in my queue. The AP clerk would then go to their queue and open up a document, and I'm retrieving that right now. And there it is. So here, here's a document that needs to be approved for whatever reason. Uh, you can see I have tasks here. These are totally customizable. For example, uh, if there was an exception to this, maybe it didn't, uh, the invoice didn't match the PO, uh, there was a math error in the footing of it, then I could actually send this to exceptions uh, and we would kick it out to another workflow and somebody would process it. What if an invoice got all the way to here and the vendor had never been set up? So this would be that, like if somebody brought in a receipt and passed it off. Well, for separation of duties, we want to make sure that the appropriate people would set up the vendor before it could be paid. I can actually click this button and send it to a completely different workflow with different people who would actually go in and do this set up the vendor and then route it back to AP to process it. Uh, if this was right and I could enter it into my AP system, I could just copy a document ID into here and say it's entered into AP and I'm out of the workflow forever. 
but what we're going to show you today is what happens if it really needs to be approved. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the department. And I'm just going to go over here, I'm going to pick my department, and I'm going to send it to that department, and I'm going to hit save. Now then, simple as that. Uh, I then click, I'm going to send it for approval. This is a two-step process. It's the way it's defined, because you don't want to submit it without that department being there. I'm going to say yes. It will transition to the next department, bring up the next invoice for my list down here. So that is all that, that I have to do at the AP clerk level. Now then, in the background, an email has been sent to me, and I will bring that up on the screen. Well, let's go over here first. As an AP manager who can approve, uh, I can then log into here. Now, I've got it logged on as the AP manager, so I'm seeing all of the steps that the AP managers can approve. So as an AP manager, I can monitor every, uh, every department's responses. Now, yes, as a manager, I could log in and look at this and see that as MSA, I have 16 documents to approve. Well, that's really probably not the way that the real world's going to work. So what we want to do is, is we're going to send that manager this custom email that tells them that they have an, an invoice from ACO to, to, to uh, re review, and they have a link in it. So that manager clicks this link, and if they're not already authenticated by the system, it will ask them to log in, and it will take them right to that step. And this is the invoice that I had sent earlier. I've got the one that I just sent, just came in and dinged. Now then, the manager at this point has some tasks. And one of the things that uh, Christina mentioned is, is I've got this button for associated documents. Well, if I wanted to see the delivery ticket or the purchase order or anything else, I could click that button and go there. If there was a question that I had for the vendor, I could actually, right from here, email this document out to the vendor uh, and ask them the question that I want to ask. And then I could use that text note that she mentioned here to say, uh, and when I hit add, the user ID time date stamp on here, and then when I hit save, that red pencil is going to turn to green. So that means that anybody who looks at this document downstream or at any point in time will be able to see that note. I could even put a big post-it note up here that says uh, do not pay duplicate. I can do digital signatures too if, if I have the rights to do that. All of those things are built into the system. But what my main task here at this point is to come in and add my codes and you'll see that when I, when I looked at that indexing schema before as an administrator, I had like 20 fields here. Well, these are the only fields that my security clearance will let me alter. So I can come down here and put in my cost center and my accounting code and any notes that I have to put in. These are the things that I can do. And then when I hit save, it's going to allow me to return it to processing. Once again, if there was something wrong with this invoice, maybe I didn't know what to do with it, I wanted to pass it on to my manager or even all, all the way up to the CFO, I could then send it to exceptions. In that note field, I would put my accept, what my exception reasons were, and I would send it on. But for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and, yep, I added all my codes and notes, I'm good. And now then, that is now exited. Now, we talked about digital signatures. You can see this particular document. Uh, has been approved, it's time date stamped, and it has uh, the IP address of the PC that set it. This can actually be built into the system too. So we have all of these things that will allow us to automate this process. Now, the really nice thing about that is down here, there are two groups of documents. We can apply timers to both of these queues. This is the document that I own. It's on this side, and when I took possession of it, a timer kicked in. If for whatever reason I came up here, I had to leave, and I didn't get this processed, well, if the timer limit is met, then I can notify me, it can notify, the system can notify me to do it, I can notify a manager, I can transition it back to another queue, all types of things that can be monitored electronically so you never have to worry about an invoice falling through the cracks. The same thing is true over here. This is this group is assigned to the AP manager group. That's how I logged in. Everybody in that group can see this queue. A timer is set here too. So if it sits here more than 24 hours, we can move it up the food chain.
So once again, is, is we can let the system do all of those minute, detailed functionalities that computers are really good at doing that help us become more efficient and look good. So let's see. That is the workflow side of it. Uh, Sean? Well, thank you, Paul. And, and I think as you kind of covered, there's a tremendous amount of flexibility here with our workflow application. We, we do realize that not every AP department processes documents the same way. And so these are uh, fully customizable workflows that you as the individual AP department uh, can work with one of our resellers to configure to the process that you would want. I want to thank you all for attending today. Again, if you missed any of the recordings uh, or, or missed any of the webinars, as Christina mentioned, you can download recorded copies of this presentation at our AP page at the bottom on our website. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Christina and Paul. And we'll talk to you next time.